it's funny because we get those calls too. Uh, how do I print this off? The fire marshal's here. <laughs> um, so th that's uh, that's amazing. I mean, I'd say out of all of our customer base, um, you definitely, and one of the reasons I did want to talk to you specifically is you're one of our biggest, uh, most super users of the system in that uh, not only do you uh, have good processes as far as what your team needs to do on a regular basis to keep the system up, but the way you you even organize it to begin with um, and set them up for success. This is how we do it. This is what you're going to do and so on. So how big is your team? How, how many people on your team help, you know, train all these people and get them on, onboarded and so on? Yeah. So, you know, as, as good of a user as I am, Dan, uh, you've met Ryan on my team uh, and he's my regional facility manager for all of Alberta. Uh, and I will tell you, he is absolutely spectacular when it comes to you know, utilization of the system. Uh, but more importantly, we do try to design it anytime something comes up. Um, and so you will see as I'll give you an example, Dan, in maintenance care, although you wouldn't think asbestos, for example, is an asset. We've actually made asbestos an asset at many of our sites. And the reason we've done that is because we have documents that, you know, have maps in our sites to show where asbestos is located. Oh. We've had as asbestos reports to say, okay, it's in your drywall mud, it's in this floor, all of those kinds of things. So typically you wouldn't see asbestos as an asset somewhere, but we identify it as an asset. We also identify it in the uh, in the drop down list as a documentation only. So there's no cost associated with it. Uh, you know, those kinds of things. So we're always looking, I guess, for bigger and better ways to utilize it so we can extract information easily. One thing, Stan, that we don't like to do as the infrastructure team is to reach out to a site and say, can you tell me how many, how many residents do you have? What is the square footage of your room? When is your fire uh, system due for inspection? It's just all there in maintenance care. And when we also go out uh, and our regional field teams go out to the sites and they do a couple of different uh, inspections on an annual basis. And one of them is a compliance slash risk inspection. Okay. And we actually do go in and search uh, documentation within maintenance care. So very often we will get tasks that are closed but we'd open up the task and see there's no supporting documentation as an example. So when we go out and we do these inspections at sites, we go in with the team. So the executive director would be there, the regional, or sorry, the facility manager would be there. And ultimately we would go and check and see, well, this document's not here or this document's not here. And again, we don't do it from a fault finding perspective, Dan, it's simply a fact finding perspective. And so if it's not there, we basically give them a timeline. Very often we create a task, another task to get that task done. That way we can also mo monitor it on a weekly or a 14 day or a 30, 60, 90 day report to ensure that it is done. That also did remind me, Dan, you did ask about the size of my team. So we do have um, uh, just one regional facility manager in Ontario, one in Alberta and one in British Columbia, supported by myself. We also have Jackie that works out of our Toronto office. And for all major projects, Jackie puts together you know, does the debrief, does the uh, quotation review, those kinds of things before we work on major projects. Uh, so it's a small team, but it's very, very efficient.